Yes, sir. Plus n group and minus n group. And we also looked at what is the uh, effect of these group. And so whenever you have a plus m group, you will get a ortho meta, uh, sorry, you will get a ortho para product. And if you have a minus m group, you will get a meta product, okay? So we have not discussed that. We have just talked about the electron density. The metabolism is really high. Then this is only my meta directing. So we have just wrote that it is meta directing and it's para directing. Okay. So what we learned till now, what we learned till now is that if I have a benzene ring, if I have a benzene ring, and this benzene ring has a group attached to it. Okay, this has a group attached to it. And if this group is a if this group is a plus, plus M group and we have any electrophile that I'm showing as E positive, okay? And we have any electrophile. Now electrophile can be Cl positive, NO2 positive, right? I hope you guys remember, yes or no? From the previous class, what are the electrophiles in different type of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions? Okay, so any of the electrophiles would be there, any of the electrophiles would be there, then you will be getting two products. So the plus M group, it increases the electron density in the ortho position and the Para position. So this group will be intact here like this, and you will get one product, which is ortho product, and the other product will be a para product like this. I hope you understand the reason because we have we have got delta negative, and here we have got delta negative, right? Now if we get a higher electron density at this ortho position and the para position, this electrophile will prefer to attack on this ortho position and on the para position. Okay, on the para position. Now, this is the case where G is equal to a plus M group. G is a plus M group, okay? So this is, we are talking about the effect of a substituent on the orientation of the attack, on the orientation. Where is the attack happening? Next, after this, we will discuss the reactivity, whether it is, whether it is more reactive than benzene or less reactive than benzene, okay? Now, this group, and here we have electrophile. And in this case, the group is a minus m group and, and hence what it will do it will just give you one product that is a meta product that is a meta product so here you have a group and here you will get a, a profile that is e okay so you can write this down these two things are most important in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions when you have a mono substituted di mono substituted benzene when you have a mono substituted benzene thing. This is the case for plus M, this is the case for minus M. Write this down, let me know if you're done. Then I will give you some examples. Then guys, okay, so you just write some examples. Here we have OH group. Let us say we are we are reacting this with HNO3. On HNO3 in the presence of H2SO4. Again, this H2SO4 is also going to be a concentrated H2SO4. Okay, so in this case, OH is a plus N group. That is why you will get a nitro group attached to this benzene ring. In two position, you will get two products. OH, you will get NO2 here and you will get NO2. You will get NO2 in the para position also. Okay, but instead of phenol, if we had, let us say, C double bond OH, that means we have an aldehyde group and we use the same reagent, concentrated HNO3. 
in the presence of concentrated H2SO4. So we are going to get only one product that is a meta product. Oxygen and hydrogen, and here you will get a NO2 group. That's it. Okay. So this is a difference if you have a plus M group and if you have a minus M group. Write this down, then we will discuss about the reactivity. Okay, then we will discuss about the reactivity. It is your hand if you're done, guys. Okay, done all of you, fine. Now this is also going to help you now. For example, there's a question in your NCERD. <clears throat> That's a very good question in which you have to prepare, in which you have to prepare different types of, different types of uh, molecules from benzene. So the question is how will you convert, how will you convert benzene to, how will you convert benzene to, the number one is P, Nitro P nitro bromo benzene nitro bromo benzene. First of all, we have to see what we are going to prepare. So we have benzene. They have given us. I have to start with benzene. Okay. And I have to convert this benzene to. I have to convert this benzene to. So, so you make benzene and then you will have in para there is Br here and there is, there is a nitro group here, NO2, okay? Now, I hope all of you know that I can add a bromine group by halogenation. Yes or no, guys, tell me. By halogenation of benzene, we have learned that reaction in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, yes or no? Please look and tell me, is there a reaction, halogenation? Yes. Right. We have also learned nitration, yes or no? Yes. Yes. But what to do first? The question arises, what to do first? What to do first? Okay. So whenever you see that there is a para substituted benzene that you have to make, you have to make what here? You have to make here a para substituted benzene, right? So all of these groups are in para position. Then you will first of all attach the ortho para directing group. You will first of all attach ortho para directing group. Why? See, if I will make a benzene like this, if I will make a benzene, let us suppose that I did nitration first. Okay. I have a benzene like this and I did a nitration first. That means HNO3, don't, you don't have to write this, okay? H2SO4 and I will do a nitration. So simply what I will get, I will get a NO2 group somewhere here, right? Because this benzene, it does not have any substituent. There will be no directive effect. One nitro group will be attached from one of the carbon atoms. Now, since this is a monosubstituted benzene, monosubstituted benzene, this will show, show some directive effect. And if I do halogenation, so what is the condition for halogenation? You will have Br2 and in the presence of FeBr3, let us say, FeBr3 and hydrous FeBr3. What you are going to get? Now this NO2 is what? It is a plus M group or minus M group, guys. Tell me. It is a plus M group or minus M group? Yes, 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 tell me. Minus M, very good. It is minus M group then. What it is going to do, it is going to add the bromine on the meta position. You can never add here. You can never add on the para position. And that is why this sequence of events, now, this sequence of reactions is not correct. This is not correct. This is wrong. So how should we react? 
first of all we should do the bromination first of all we should do the bromination you will get a br here right you will get a br here now we know that br has what lone pair electrons and it is a and it is a what it is a ortho para directing group so obviously you are going to get a para substituted nitrobenzene you can do nitro nitration here hno3 in the presence of h2so4 now you are going to get a para substituted you will get one ortho substituted also that is another case but you are getting what you want you are getting what you want you wanted a para substituted benzene with bromine and nitro group attached to it so this is the correct way okay you got it all of you yes or no tell me yes sir yes okay fine so you can write this down now let me know if you are done then there are three more questions like this so we will not be discussing the reactions as as such but we will be discussing what to do first okay what to do first so write this down let me know if you are done So you have to identify like this. This is Br, and this is nitro, right? So Br and nitro, Br is coming. You have to do a bromination to benzene, and then you have to do nitration in benzene. So what you will do first? This will be first. You will do nit bromination, and then you will be doing nitration. So this is the way how we will be solving the next three questions. Okay, we will not be writing the reagents because we have already written the reagents and the reactions. You can just plug in them. <clears throat> Done, all of you. Let me know if you are done. Parvati is done. What about others? Razan, Minashi, Mazia. Okay, Abdul Rahman is done. Okay, thank. Write the second one. Write the second one. It is M nitro chlorobenzene. M nitro chlorobenzene. Now, in this case, I have a benzene group like this. And I have to convert this benzene into there is a chlorine group and there is a nitro group here, and which is in meta position NO2. Okay, it is in meta position NO2. Now, here you have to first of all see that if I want to add chlorine, then I have to do what? I have to do chlorination. And if I have to add a nitro group, what do I have to do? Tell me, guys. What do I have to do? Yes, yes, yes. Tell me. What do I need to nitration. do? Nitration. Nitration. Okay. Now, this is very, very crucial that if it is meta nitrochlorobenzene, then you will, you will attach the group which is meta directed. And you will, first of all, attach the group which is. Meta directing. If it is para something, para disaccharide benzene, you have to make. If you have to make para nitrochlorobenzene, then you will add the substituent which is ortho para directing. Now here you tell me, chlorine is what directing? Ortho directing or para directing? Ortho para or meta directing? Tell me. Meta directing. Chlorine. Chlorine is plus m or minus m? Oh, plus. Plus M, right? So it is what ortho para directing. Hence, first of all, we have to do nitration. So you can write it like this. Okay. The first step will be HNO3 in the presence of H2SO4. And the second step would be Cl2 in the presence of AlCl3. Okay. AlCl3. So if you have E disubstituted, if you have O or P, O or P disubstituted benzene. If you have to make O or P disubstituted benzene, then 
add the plus m group first first you will add the plus m group if you have m di substituted benzene so this is m di substituted because nitro and chloro there are two substitution happening di substituted benzene then add the minus m group first okay those who know hindi they can remember is this like this jo hai wahi pehle hoga hai na jo hai wahi pehle hoga if there is m then there will be meta directing first hai na if there is P there that then we will add the ortho para directing first. Jo hai pehle wahi hoga. How should I translate this? Very good phrase in Hindi, but I don't know how should I translate that so that it becomes easy to remember. Jo hai wahi pehle hoga. Tell me guys. Any input from you? Yes, Parvati. Any input? You understand Hindi, Parvati? Yes, sir. Okay. So can you translate this? Jo hai wahi pehle hoga. Whatever is so given first will happen first. Given first. Making first question in the hour. Whatever is given will happen first. Okay. But if, if yeah. you can remember this, I think this is better. If it is M, then it will be meta directing first. If it is P, then it will be para directing first. So write this down. Let me know if you're done. Done, guys. Okay. So the third one is third one is P nitro toluene. So now from benzene to P nitro toluene. So we have benzene. Then we have to first of all make toluene, and here you will get NO two group. So again. If I want to add a CST group, that means I have to do alkylation, right? I have to do alkylation. Friedel Craft alkylation, right? Alkylation. And this is again what? Nitration. So for alkylation, what is the reagent for alkylation? First of all, you need to have a haloalkene. So for this, you will have the haloalkene that is CST-CL in the presence of AlCl3. This is the first reaction that you will do. The second reaction will be HNO3 in the presence of H2SO4. Okay, so these HNO3 and H2SO4 are again, I'm seeing it as concentrated because alkyl group is what it is. Meta directing, sorry, meta directing. It is ortho para directing plus N group. Write this down. Let me know if you're done. Yes, guys, done. Yes. Done. Okay, fine. Now let us write about the effect on the reactivity. Okay, we will write about the effect on the reactivity. We have looked upon the effect on orientation. Now we'll look at the effect on reactivity. Okay, reactivity. So we have electrophilic aromatic substitutions. We have electrophilic aromatic substitutions. The reagent is, reagent is electrophile. Hence, hence the reaction will be faster. If the organic molecule, if the organic molecule has high electron density. We are just talking about electrophilic aromatic substitution because we have seen that the electrophiles, huh? the reagents, they are electrophile, they have a positive charge. Then they will like to attack a benzene which has a higher electron density. This benzene should have high electron density. Then only 
the electrophiles they are going to attack then only the electrophiles they are going to attack yes or no guys tell me positive and negative they will attract each other you will have negative charge if there is more electron density and the electrophile it is a positively charged species right now we can here from here we can clearly see from here we can clearly see that rate of reaction is directly proportional to the directly proportional to the electron density electron density on benzene on benzene okay and we know that minus m groups minus m groups they withdraw electron from benzene minus m groups withdraw electron from benzene and hence their reactivity is lower than benzene okay so all the minus m groups right so if you have a mono substituted benzene which has a minus m group it will withdraw electrons from the benzene ring it will withdraw electrons from the benzene ring and hence it will maybe hence it will be making it low uh, lesser reactive hence it will be making it lesser reactive okay next is so no now let us look at the order of minus m effect right order so order of minus m will be no2 it will withdraw electron the most this will be followed by the nitrile group cn this will be followed by the aldehyde group this will be followed by ketonic group and then you will have at last carboxylic acid group okay so this is the order of minus m okay order of minus m okay so no2 will have uh, the least reactive no2 okay. will be the least reactive so yes correct it will be the least reactive because it is withdrawing electron the most done yes okay right next about the plus m group right all plus m groups increase the electron density increase the electron density in electron density in benzene ring in benzene ring and hence they are more reactive they are more reactive than benzene than pure benzene except except halogens Okay, except halogens. This is important. Halogens, even though they are plus m group, but they are deactivated. But they are deactivating. They are not activating. Deactivating means if you withdraw electron, if the <clears throat> reactivity is lesser than benzene, then it is called a deactivating group. If someone, if a group, it deactivates the benzene ring towards electrophilic aromatic substitution. If our group, it activates the ring. If it increases the electron density, they are known as activating groups. now let us see why halogens they are not activating and they are deactivating since halogens since halogens are highly electronegative since halogens are highly electronegative they pull electron density from the ring 
via sigma bonds via sigma bonds hence making the ring hence making the ring lesser reactive hence making the ring lesser reactive Done. Okay. Now, so when we were discussing about reactivity, we mentioned there are two things, right? Here also there are two things. If you look at reactivity. there are a few groups which makes the benzene ring more reactive there are a few groups which makes the benzene ring less reactive so you have two groups we have activating we have activating groups and we have deactivating groups okay so the deactivating groups it decreases the electron density and it also decreases reactivity towards electrophilic aromatic substitution activating groups increases electron density and it also increases the reactivity towards electrophilic aromatic substitution so wait a second let me now just reshare this thing it gets stuck sometimes okay now what are the examples of activating groups so the examples of activating groups are all plus m except halogens okay then there are some alkyl groups the alkyl group they are also activating alkyl groups such as ch3 c2h5 okay etc now in the case of deactivating all minus i sorry all minus m groups and halogens all of them are deactivating and uh, yeah all of them are deactivating it is just that halogens now they are slightly deactivating not very much so so minus m group they have more deactivating nature than the halogens okay minus m group they have more deactivating nature than halogens so write this down let me know if it's done Done, guys. Okay. Write a question now. 
arrange the following. Arrange the following in decreasing order. Of electrophilic aromatic substitution. So you have a few compounds in the A case. Let us say you have chlorobenzene. Then B you have let us say NO2 2,4 dinitro 2,4 dinitro chlorobenzene. And see you have NO2 and Cl. Okay. Now in this case, you can see very easily that this is what minus I because it is pulling electron through sigma bonds. Here you have minus I, minus M, and minus M because you have one chlorine which is minus I, nitro is minus M, and nitro is another minus M. And here you have minus I and only minus M. So this is how you will compare. This is how you will compare. Now you can see that. In this case, the B ring will have the least electron density because all of because there are three electron withdrawing groups attached to the B ring. There are three electron withdrawing groups attached to the B ring. Okay, and then uh, you will see that C is the next, and then A. So A will be having the highest reactivity, followed by C, and followed by B. Okay, so write this down. Let me know if you're done. Then we can start the next chapter that is thermodynamics. Done, all of you. Yes. Okay. Is there anyone who is still writing? All of you got this, right? Yes or no? Tell me. The order. Yes, Parvati, Razan, Minashi, Khalil, Abdul Rahman. Yes. Sir. Yes, no? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now I am going to start. The chapter that is thermodynamics. Okay, the chapter thermodynamics. So see what is going to happen. I will be teaching you guys thermodynamics, but you will not be writing the notes. Okay, you will write. You will you will have a notebook with you. It's not like you will not have a notebook with you. You should have a notebook with you. You will be solving problems. Okay, you will be solving problems, but you will not be writing the notes as we write notes here. Okay, because that takes a lot of time, and you see that we don't have much time. Okay. Another thing is that I would rather like to complete thermodynamics and equilibrium for you guys rather than S and P block. This is my take because thermodynamics and equilibrium these are bigger chapters, and I think most of the problems will be coming from those chapters. And S and P blocks, those are descriptive chapters that if you read and just go next day for the examination, you can score well. Okay, this is my thought. If somebody wants to give more inputs, that no sir, S and P block, pehle kara dijiye. Thermodynamics and equilibrium, will, we can see it later. So tell me, how do you guys feel? Sir, I think you should uh, take these two chapters, sir, because these are very important, sir. Thermodynamics and in school also, uh, they are they have completed S and P block, and okay, major portions are deleted, so Sorry? it's easy. Only. No, SNP most of the portions are deleted. Yeah. SNP block, me now. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's true. Most of the uh, portion that is left in SNP block is already that is in chapter uh, three. That is periodic properties of yeah, uh, yes. molecules. Okay. So all of you are fine with this now. That I will, I will be attempting. This is quite difficult task, but uh, 
my aim is that you should be able to solve the NCERT exercises. At least that is the thing that uh, you should be able to get. Now, so I will be mostly focusing on some theory, you know, some theory. I will give you the bigger picture of thermodynamics, what is thermodynamics and what is equilibrium. Now, one thing is for sure, after learning thermodynamics here, you will have many tools in your mind that you can look around the whole, uh, like many things. Thermodynamics is one of the most basic sciences that is there. Those laws of thermodynamics, they are completely universal. And you have also learned thermodynamics in physics, right? And uh, here you will be learning thermodynamics, but there will be a slight difference in the perspective of thermodynamics that you have learned in physics and what you're going to learn in chemistry. First of all, I will introduce like that only because you, I know that it has quite a bad name because thermodynamics is something different in physics and it is something different in chemistry. That is the, um, what I can say, that is what everyone says in 11th standard. Okay. So first of all, let me start with thermodynamics and why there are two types. I mean, even the first law, if you see, then the physics people, they teach something else. And if you look at the chemistry books, there is something else, right? Have you looked at books or no? Has anyone looked at books? Yes. Yes. Okay. Fine. So for those who have not looked at books, so there is a difference in the perspective of thermodynamics and thermodynamics is what? First of all, thermodynamics is the study of flow of heat, thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is the study of, you can say it is the flow of heat. Okay, thermo means, you can say like temperature, different dynamics means motion, motion of heat, or you can also say flow of heat, flow of energy. Okay, flow of energy. There are many things that you can say about thermodynamics, but we will not look into that very much. Let us first of all understand why there are two different types of thermodynamics that you study in chemistry and physics. So when you are when you are studying in physics, the thermodynamics that you are studying in physics, they always have a constant volume. They always keep the volume constant. Okay, they always keep the volume constant. But all of you know that in chemistry we are dealing with open containers, we do reactions in beakers, they have open, it is not closed, right? It is open. So first difference is that. The next difference is when I look at, when I look at giving of energy now, so if I give this system energy, then if I look at physics perspective, then this is the human. Okay. And the sole concern of physics is to conserve, I mean, to, uh, not to conserve exactly, but, uh, to reduce the energy consumption, okay, to reduce the energy consumption of humans for physics, okay, that is the whole point. So when I am giving some energy to a particular system, what I'm, whatever I'm studying, if I am giving energy, then physics people, they said that the energy has been reduced. So we take that sign as minus E. But if I took, if I take chemistry, if I take chemistry, and I am more concerned about the system that I am learning about, I'm not concerned about the human here, right? I'm not concerned about the human here. So this is the change in perspective. So when I give energy to the system, so look, I look at the system and I say that the energy has increased. That is why we say that this is plus. Okay, this is plus C. So this is the main difference. This is the main difference in the perspective. Okay, so the perspective of physics is from human's perspective. They keep the system as themselves. What I am doing, am I giving energy or I am taking energy? But when I chemists, they talk about thermodynamic, they say that the solution or the reaction or whatever container we have, the gas, what we are giving energy to the gas, that means the energy is increased. Okay, the energy is increased. First thing is that those who have learned thermodynamics in physics and thermodynamics in chemistry also for them. Now, whenever we start learning about science, whenever we start learning about science, we have to first of all, learn a few things regarding what we are going to learn, right? First of all, we have to say you know, what we are going to learn. And then we have to polish and smooth this what so much so that there is no, there is no chances of any vagueness. There is no chances of any vagueness. And hence, we first start with the terminology. Okay, we first start with the terminology that we are going to use in an uh, sorry, in order to understand thermodynamics. In order to understand thermodynamics. 
Okay, so we'll start with terminology. Okay, and then we will see what we are going to study in thermodynamics. Is that fine, all of you? Tell me. Yes. Is that fine? Ha, you have to be at least responsive with me. Okay, those who speak, at least they please speak. Khalil, Mazia, Mehreen. Khalil, what happened to your mic? Yeah, your mic is not working. Okay. Parvati speaks, Razan, Yusra, all of you. Okay. Give me answers. Now, first of all, we will start with system. There is something in thermodynamics which is known as system. Okay. Now, what is a system? System is that part of universe, that part of universe which is under observation. This is the part of universe. under observation okay no problem here tell me any problem here no sir no, sir. no problem no, sir. okay fine now again system we will divide the system into two parts we will say that a system is heterogeneous and we will say that a system is homogeneous okay either it will be heterogeneous or homogeneous now what is the criteria of criteria for classification heterogeneous in which we will have the substances will be in different phases. Substance in substance in different phases. And in homogeneous, what will be there? Substance in, tell me, substance in substance in same phase, right? Right, same phase. Now, I'm using the word phase here that you have earlier learned as state. And now, what is the state of water at room temperature? It is liquid. So phase is just a refined form of the word that is state. Okay. So you have been using this word state and you may have also learned this word, heard this word phase, which represents solid, liquid and gases. But from now on, we will not be using state for solid, liquid and gases. We will be using the word phase. Perfectly fine with everyone? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now you tell me. A glass of water. This is our system. What is our system? What is our system, guys? What is our system? A glass of water. Now you tell me whether it is heterogeneous or homogeneous. Tell me, homogeneous or heterogeneous? Homogeneous. Okay. And let us say ink pen. That works, okay, with, in, with ink and pen. Then let us say gas in cylinder. Let's say human body. Right. Now, most of you said a glass of water is what? A glass of water is homogeneous, okay? Now here comes science and science is that our system is the glass of water. Now, this glass is also a part of system and hence it will be heterogeneous. You understand the nuance here? Tell me. Yes. We have a glass of water, right? So, glass of water, the whole thing is what? The whole thing is the system and hence this will be what? Heterogeneous because the glass is solid and water is liquid. Okay. Now, pencil, it is completely solid and hence it will be homogeneous. Ink pen will be heterogeneous. Now look here, gas in cylinder. Now our system is the gas in cylinder, not the cylinder. But if I, if I would have said the um, gas cylinder, just gas cylinder, that means we are talking about the cylinder more importantly. In this case, we are talking about the gas more importantly, which is inside the cylinder. We are talking about the place. We're talking about the place. We are not talking about the cylinder itself. And hence this gas will be homogeneous. Okay. Now in this case also, if I would have told water in glass then we are talking about the water which is the system water which is the system and obviously the human body even though we look completely solid we have inside us blood and many other things which are not solid and hence it will be also heterogeneous okay Okay, guys, any problem with these things? Please let me know. No problem? Yes. Okay, so we are moving. 
we said that it is a part of universe, right? System is a part of universe under observation. So if I say that this is our complete universe and this small portion in which we are learning and with which we are studying a particular substance, this is our system, then this whole part now, then this whole part, this whole part is known as surrounding. This whole part will be known as surrounding. If this is the system, this is our system and the part, the remaining part of universe, right? The remaining part of universe, remaining part of universe, which is not part of system is called surrounding. Fine guys, yes or no? Then we can say that system plus surrounding is equal to universe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fine. Now you have understood system, surrounding, and universe. These are the only things that we care about. We have a system in which we are studying the part of universe which is under the observation. Anything except that, that is surrounding. And if I add surrounding and system, they both make universe. Okay. Fine, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Now let us talk about a bit. Let us talk more about surrounding. Okay. Let us talk more about surrounding. Now, technicality. That means the technical definition of surrounding is the part of universe that is remaining, right? The remaining part of the universe. But if I talk about the practicality, then in practice, what happens? In practice, what happens? Let us talk about two things. Let, first of all, let us talk about um, what is the bomb that all of you like in Diwali? I don't know the English name. I know the Hindi names. Alu bomb hota hai. Then there is a uh, rocket and all. Okay. You all know alu bomb? No. But you don't know firecrackers. You don't know firecrackers. Firecrackers. Okay. So let us talk about firecrackers and let us talk about fat man. You know what is fat man? You guys know what is fat, what is fat man? Little boy fat man. Does it bell, ring a bell? No. Are you no one? Yes, Parvati. No, sir. Nay. Little boy, fat man, never heard of it? No, sir. Ah, little boy, fat man, these are the atomic bombs which were uh, dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, does it ring, does it ring a bell yeah. now? Yeah. yeah, now it is. Okay. Fine. So, both of these are bombs. Both of these are bombs. But if I look at firecrackers, then I will say that if firecracker is here, then it is going to affect the surrounding, which is, let us say, what? One meter to five meter. Let us say five meter. But if I talk about fat man, the surrounding for fat man in the practical sense will be a complete city. Right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me. Anna? So universe, we are talking about the remaining part of universe. So practical, I mean, in the sense of practice, it is not very possible. It is not possible to say that everything which is not system, it is completely surrounding. So in, for the purpose of measurements and for the purpose of practicals, what do we say? The part of universe, the part of the remaining of the remaining part of universe, which gets affected by the changes in system. There is changes in system. That means you are burning the firecracker. So there's a change in system and then it bursts out. So the system is bursting out and it is, it is affecting some part of the universe and those part of the universe, they are known as the surrounding. Now, if you have firecracker, that surrounding will be of some, I don't know, a circle of five meters or something. But if you're dropping an atomic bomb, then the surrounding that will be affected by the change in that system, that is the atomic bomb, it will be the complete city. It will be the complete city. Okay. So this is the difference between the definition of surrounding and how we use surrounding in the real, how we use the surrounding in real life. Okay. Now, next we have to learn about, so we have known two things that is system and surrounding. So let us say that this is our system. 
Now system, and this is system, and this is surrounding. Okay, system, and this is surrounding. Okay, now oh. system and surrounding they will be separated by a boundary. They will be separated by a boundary. Okay, so what is boundary? Boundary is that thing which separates the system and surrounding. Boundary separates system and surrounding. Okay, any problem? Any problem, guys? No, sir. No problem. Okay, fine. So we have learned about three things. You have learned about system, the part of universe that is under observation. You have learned about surrounding the part of universe, the remaining part of universe, which gets affected by the changes in the system, which gets affected by the changes in the system. And we, you, either you can say that it is just the remaining part of the universe, which is not system. If you have to write in your examination, that is also correct and valid definition for the surrounding. Next, we have learned about boundary. What is boundary? Boundary is the thing which separates the system and the surrounding. So system and surrounding, these are separated by a boundary. Now this boundary can be real or it can be imaginary also. It can be imaginary also that you take a flask like this, you take, you take a flask like this, okay? Or you take a beaker like this, okay? You take a beaker like this. Now it does not have a real boundary. There is this glass, which is a boundary, but if I look at the upper portion, it does not have a boundary. So you see that, let us imagine that this is the boundary for, this is the boundary for the beaker. Now, the boundary, it can be classified. Now, boundary, there can be many types of boundary. And on the basis of the boundary, we have different types of system. Okay, we have different types of system. So the system, it is uh, classified into three types. System. It is classified into three types. We have here open system. Then we have a closed system. And we have an isolated system. Okay, we have a closed system and we have an isolated system. Okay, by the way, you will be not getting this notes, okay, because there's nothing written here. You will be getting a very so you what notes you will be getting, it will look something like this. Okay, so you can see it is completely organized, right? All of you can write this, okay? So you'll be getting this type of notes. Not the one that I'm writing right now. Okay. Fine. So don't worry about that. Just wanted to make that clear. Okay, fine. Now system and system can be classified into three types: open, closed, and isolated system. Open, closed, and isolated system. So I will talk about how can you identify an open system. In open system, there can be an exchange of someone's mic is on. So exchange of mass and exchange of mass and energy is possible. In closed system, only exchange of energy is possible. Exchange means what? Exchange between whom? Exchange between the system and the surrounding. That means in an open system, what you can do, you have a system and in that you can add something. If you can add mass and if you can also exchange energy, then it is what? It is an open system. In closed system, what you can do, you can just exchange energy, but not mass. And in isolated system, no exchange of No exchange of heat. Okay. By heat, I mean again energy. By heat, I mean again energy. Now, example of open system would be let us say a cup of coffee. Also, we can uh, do some experiments in a beaker, reaction in beaker, open beaker. Okay, a closed system. Okay, once again, humans, they are also open system, right? There is a transfer and exchange of mass because when we eat, what we are doing, we are adding something to the system. If I consider a human body as a system, we are adding some mass. Then also if you work around and if you sweat a lot and if there is exchange between the temperature of environment and the temperature of human being, then we are also exchanging energy. We are also exchanging energy. Closed system will be something, let us say, a bottled 
water reaction in closed vessel right so if you have closed something that means what you are doing what you are doing there you are not going to add anything neither you are going to remove something from the system and in isolated system you can't say that there is an isolated system except a perfect isolated system would be the universe but one isolated system that we can talk about is a very good thermo flask right in which we keep the hot water right in which we keep the hot water ye thermo hoga yahan pe to be thermo now universe is also what if i take the universe as the system then there is no surrounding if there is no surrounding then there can be no exchange of heat right because if you have taken the system as the system as universe the complete universe as the system that means there is no surrounding there is no surrounding there is no question of heat right there is no question of exchange of heat now in open system there is no boundary in open system there is no boundary in closed system there is a boundary which is known as diathermic okay so now let us look at this word diathermic so we have dia dia means through therm means heat okay now diathermic means a system in which the heat can go through a system in which a heat can go through and if i talk about the isolated system here you have the boundary as a diabetic a diabetic Okay, so again, a diabetic means there is exchange of nothing, exchange of nothing. If you cannot exchange heat, there is no question of mass also. There is no question of mass also. Okay, all of you understood this? Yes or no? Tell me. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. No. So you have talked about system surrounding, and we have also classified the systems in surrounding and the boundary, and the boundary. Now let us come up and let us talk. We know. what substance okay what substance i am going to study okay we know that we are going to study about chemistry right we are going to study about chemicals we are going to study about chemicals but the next question arises what property are you going to study yes or no guys what property are we going to study what property are we going to study now when we were studying the chemistry now so we started with the very first chapter that dealt with chemistry was atomic structure now before atomic structure that was just the introduction and the again that was just basic terminologies that we are going to uh, that we are going to use what is the grammar of chemistry language how to uh, if there is a chemical reaction what does it mean if i want to translate in english so the first chapter was only about that it was was it was not anything about chemistry okay okay next in atomic structure we learned about atoms we learned about electronic configuration and from electronic configuration we arranged the periodic table in the increasing atomic number and we saw there are some trends in the electronic configuration in the group one element there is one electron in the valence shell second second group we have second element second sorry the second group we have two electrons in the valence shell 13th may we have 3 14th may we have four and so on now if due to these valencies we formed some molecules and compounds right we formed some molecules so when we found a molecule so we say let us say h2o right or let us say ch4 so we were talking about these things right this this was chemistry for us this was chemistry for us so we were talking in the terms of molecular structure we, then for ch4 we wanted to know the what is the shape here so this is one property of ch4 what is the bond angle here right and what is the bond order here so these are the properties of ch4 now we know that in real life we are not we are never going to deal with one molecule of ch4 we are never going to deal with one molecule of ch4 what we are going to deal with is a bulk of ch4 right so you will have a methane gas you have water as liquid right so you have bulk things you have bulk things and these bulk things they have different properties they also have properties but these properties are not bond angle not the shape not the bond order right these are some different properties so these properties of bulk things solid liquid those which are in solid liquid or gas okay so i hope you now you understand there is molecule a molecular level and in the bulk level the molecular level we have bond angle bond order valency oxidation states okay so these are the things when we talk about the molecular level but in the bulk level 
we have some properties and we have also studied those properties in the states of matter chapter. For the gases, we said that for gases, we said that a gas can be, a gas can be described if we know the pressure, the volume, the temperature, and the number of moles. These were the four properties of gases that we wanted to. Okay. And if we have these four properties, then we can say that, okay, fine, this gas is in this state. Okay. The gas is in this state. Now, these bulk properties, they are known as macroscopic properties, right? Micro means small, macro means big. So we have to study about the macroscopic properties and not the microscopic properties. Macroscopic properties. We have to study about the macroscopic properties. Now, these macroscopic properties, now, they can be divided into two types. They are, there are some properties which depend on mass. Depends on mass or amount of substance. But there are some which, which are independent of, I will give you examples, independent of mass or amount. Okay, mass or amount. Let us talk about a property, number of moles. Now you tell me, if I will increase the mass, the number of moles will increase, yes or no? Tell me, guys. Yes. Okay. Now, once again, if I have volume, if I will increase the mass, the volume will increase, yes or no, guys? Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Right? Okay. But what about density? No. No, no? Because if I take 1 kg iron or if I take 500 kg of iron, the density is going to be the same. The density is going to be same, right? So these properties which depend on mass, they are known as, these properties which are depend on mass, these are known as, so you can extend the value of property, you can extend the value of number of moles or volume if you increase the mass and hence these are known as extensive. Extensive. Now this independent, now those which are independent of the mass, they are known as intensive. These are known as intensive because if you take iron and if you want to describe the density, it is not going to change. It is the intensive correct intrinsic characteristic of the iron. It is intrinsic characteristic of the iron. It does not depend on mass. So let us talk about some. Uh, yeah, let us talk about some properties and we will say whether it is extensive or intensive. So you understand extensive intensive now? Yes or no? Tell me. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Now, oh, one thing that you should do that I would uh, ask you to do is, since I will be completing some portions today, I will be sending you the notes. Please write that notes before the previous, before the next class. Okay. Then and then only you will be able to remember things. Otherwise, you know you are not writing. You are just listening. You are understanding things. That is fine. But you will not be able to retain these things if you don't write it down. Okay. But if you write it down, that will be even better because you are taking out some time to again put in chemistry and the more you spend time on some subject that subject will become better but again classify the following in extensive or intensive first is let us say about mass so mass is obviously not extensive right if we increase the amount the mass will increase right second what is volume volume is also extensive Density, we have said it is intensive. Okay. Now you can also see that density, it is equal to mass by volume. Yes or no? Yes. We can say that ratio of extensive is intensive. Ratio of extensive is intensive because if this is also increasing, this is also increasing, the ratio will is going to be constant. Okay. Another example you can say, uh, let us say um, number of moles. It is what extensive. Then volume we have seen it is extensive. But if I talk about the concentration, which is number of moles upon volume, it is going to be intensive. Okay. So there are other things. For example, if I talk about temperature. So temperature does not increase if you increase the mass, right? So it is also intensive. You can talk about melting point. 
So melting point of water is not going to change in tensor. What else? So the concentration terms, these are going to be intensive ones. Okay, these are going to be intensive only. Okay, now pressure is important. Pressure. Pressure. Pressure is also going to be intensive. Okay, pressure is also going to be intensive. Let me show you why. We know that PV is equal to NRT. And we have pressure, it is equal to NRT upon V. So R is the constant, it, it will not matter. Number of moses, what? Number of moses, extensive. Volume is extensive. Ratio of that will be intensive. Okay, so pressure is going to be intensive. Write this down, let me know if you're done. Done, guys. Yes, sir. Sorry, sorry. Why I was waiting to uh, okay. Sorry, I should not wait. Let me hold the thing. Now, in thermodynamics, what we will be seeing is now not in thermodynamics, rather in chemistry, it is usually like this, right? There are something here. So we call this as initial. Then there will be some change and it will go to final. Okay. So in thermodynamics, we'll be studying about the initial. You don't have to study. Whenever you start now, please remember this. The initial conditions, the human is setting up the initial conditions. He never wants to know about the initial condition. I can set up my own initial condition for a reaction. I can take this much gram of a molecule, this much gram of that molecule and start the reaction. I don't know what kind of change is going to happen, right? So I want to predict about the change and I also want to predict about the final outcome. I also want to predict about the final outcome with explanation and that is science. Prediction with explanation is science, okay? It's now this explanation means there should be evidence and numerical evidence, okay? numerical evidence that is science because initial what we are going to take that we never have to predict right you never have to predict and you never have to explain why you are taking this much grams only I'm very mercy like it's my choice i will take because i want more products right so prediction with explanation so we are more focused on the change right now okay we are more focused on the change right now and we will be also focusing on the final state we will be focusing on the final state when we are learning about the next chapter that is equilibrium so what I have written as initial change and final, I will be writing as initial change and then equilibrium because at the end, each and every system, it wants to achieve equilibrium where nothing is happening. So an example of equilibrium, if I want to give you is, let us say, and it is very good example if I talk about thermodynamics. There's a block here. The temperature here is 100 degrees Celsius. There's another block of iron. The temperature here is zero degrees Celsius. Okay, the temperature here is zero degrees Celsius. What will happen if I will combine these two things? The block A and the block B. Now you can see that. Now all of you, all of you would say that, okay, fine. After some point of time, what will happen? So what will be the um, temperature? Both will, it will become 100 degrees Celsius or it will become if I join both of them, it will become zero degrees Celsius or it will become somewhere around 50 degrees Celsius. You guys tell me. A, B, or one, two, or three. What will be the case? Third one, Third one right? Yes or no? Third one, all of you agree? Yes. Yes, yes all of you agree that third one. So initially we took 100 degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius. In the chain, what is happening? 
the, you can see this, you can see right now that the heat is flowing from higher temperature to lower temperature, right? And hence what is happening, the temperature is decreasing in A and it is increasing in B. And then when the temperature of both the e blocks A and B becomes same, we will say that there is no considerable change in the temperature, yes or no? The temperature of B will increase, 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 but it will come to a point when it will stop increasing. That point is known as the equilibrium positive point. That is the equilibrium state. The equilibrium state is what? Where both the blocks have the same temperature. I know, same temperature or more, or rather more effective answer would be the state of the system in which there is no change, in which we can see no considerable change. Because if I talk about time here, temperature will start to increase. It will be increasing, 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 right? In the B case, in the B block, it will be increasing and then it will stop increasing. When it stops increasing at that point of time, I will say that the equilibrium has been achieved. Okay. And we are not very much concerned about the time in which an equilibrium has been achieved. We are more concerned about, we are more concerned about the state at which the equilibrium has been achieved. We are more concerned about this 50 degree rather than how much time it has taken. So if I have made clear two things. We are more interested in the property, right? What is the amount? What is the quantity? What is the property, right? If I talk about temperature, then I want to know what is the temperature at equilibrium. I want to know what is the pressure at equilibrium. I want to know what is the concentration at equilibrium. Okay. These things. We are not concerned about time. Okay. Will you keep this in mind that we are not concerned about time right now? Yes or no? Okay. So you keep this in mind. So when I say about equilibrium, right, the equilibrium has been achieved at a point. So that point does not refer to the point of time. It refers to the point in the property, the value of property. For example, in this case, it was temperature. Then we'll talk about pressure or concentration. Now, so one thing is that what is the property? And the next thing is that how is the change happening, right? How's the change happening? The heat is flowing like this. So this change, we are more concerned in thermodynamics. And this property, the quantity of property will be more concerned in equilibrium. It will be more concerned in equilibrium. Now to define the properties now, first of all, we will have to see what types of properties are there, right? What types of properties are there? So whatever we have learned till now, the macroscopic properties, now, the microscopic properties, it can be, uh, it can be, uh, it can be classified into two types. There are some which are known as path function and there are some known as state functions state function and there are some known as path function so state function it only depends on initial and final state okay initial and final state path it depends on on the way in which process was carried out. Okay. So as of now, you just know that there are two terms, state function, and path functions. You will be able to identify what is state function, what is path function when we start doing some examples. But you have to right now know that there are some functions which depends only on the initial and the final state. And there are some function which depend on the, the way in which a process has been carried out. A process has been carried out. There is another term which is known as state variable. Now, state variable, state variables are those, those properties that define those properties that define the state of system. The state of system. Now, here you have to be very careful. It may sometimes seem that state variable and state functions, these are same thing. Okay, so no problem. It may seem that state variable and state functions, these are same thing, but they are not. Now, let us see how they are different. So state variable will only be used. Let me give you an example. You have a cup of coffee, this cup of coffee. Now it has 60 degree Celsius temperature. So you kept it in room and asked that as the time passes, what you see, 
that it is now 25 degrees celsius okay 25 degrees celsius now when you are talking about coffee then you will be mostly mostly you mostly want to uh, think about you mostly want to think about the temperature right if it is drinkable temperature or not drink, drink, uh, drinkable temperature yes or no you are concerned about the temperature right mm -hmm. because at 60 degrees celsius you can okay fine it will be good to drink but at 25 degrees celsius it will taste horrible right yes or no so here we are seeing at a property that is temperature so the temperature is the state variable here because it is changing according to the initial state and final state now let us say something is i am adding an information here it was 500 ml nahi 500 ml bahut zyada ho jayega 250 ml and here also it will be volume will be 250 ml okay now this is the initial state and this is the final state now you tell me is this information of volume of any use for us if i want to drink tea tell me addition of this information is of no use right because it is not changing yes or no parvati mohammad raza yes sir yes so it is not a state variable because it is not varying according to the state in this particular example but if i talk about volume per se not attaching it to any experiment then volume is a state function okay it will depend on state but right now it is not depending on state that is why i will not that is why i will not define the system according to the volume i am more interested in the temperature that is changing hence i will be defining the system according to temperature and not according to volume you got the concept tell me state function and state variable yes or no tell me yes so state function you will look at the definition you will look at the definition kya hai mass volume temperature all of these are what state function but as soon as state variable the word state variables come you have to look at the experiment okay tell me guys you understand where you have to look for state function you have to look at the property and in state variable you have to look at the experiment okay yes or no tell me yes yes sir. all of you got this now all of you got so an experiment the setup of the experiment will tell you what are the properties of the system you are more interested in and what are the properties of the system that is changing and that is varying so those properties will be state variable those properties will be state variable okay okay so i have also talked about the uh, thermodynamic equilibrium so where the macroscopic properties they will not change okay so the state at which the system is said to be in equilibrium when if the microscopic macroscopic properties they don't change if the temperature is not changing in the iron block then it is uh, in equilibrium then it is in equilibrium now we have to look about the look on the thermodynamic processes thermodynamic processes okay now thermodynamic processes it can it can happen with exchange of matter or energy between system and surrounding okay between system and surround so one thing you have to look a process whenever you are having a process the process results in change of at least one state variable okay whenever we are doing a process then we are going to change at least one at least one state variable okay in the previous case what did we change we changed the temperature the volume was not changed so whenever we are doing any thermodynamic process one of the state variable will change we have different types of process in which we keep some things constant so if i classify on the basis of what is constant then i can write the processes as number 1 you will you can tell me what is this process and what is going to be constant here isothermal what temperature will be constant in this case yeah temperature is constant temperature is constant or temperature remains unchanged okay temperature remains unchanged 
second uh, let us see add adiabatic in this case there is no exchange of heat no exchange of heat so heat is given by q in chemistry and we will say that q it is equal to zero third is isobaric so you tell me isobaric process what will be constant Pressure. 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 Pressure is constant or pressure remains unchanged. Then if I see isochoric, volume. what will be constant? Volume constant. If, if I have a cyclic process, then you can say that the system it will go many processes but it will return to the original state okay after various processes the system returns to original state system returns to original state right okay? now there are two processes reversible and irreversible okay now for reversible and irreversible you have to understand this you have to understand this okay now i will talk about i will talk about there is a system like this i'm creating so this is a movable piston okay this is a movable piston And here I have kept sand. Okay, you can imagine that this is a bag of sand. This is a bag of sand. And so, what we have to do the final final stages because we are talking about process. So we'll see how these how process can be different if even if we have. The same initial and final state. The final state would be that I have poured sand on this particular piston and it has got a bit down. So there are sand here. There is sand here. Okay. Now I have to go from this initial state. To the final state. This is our initial state. This is our final state. Okay. This is our final state. There are two ways in which I can go from this state to the other state. There are two ways. What I can do? I can either pour all the sand at once. Or what I can do, or I can add a particle at a time. Yes or no? These are the only two possible ways in which to for achieving the final state. Yes or no? Yes. Hmm? yes? Okay. Uh, this may seem very absurd, but please remember we are not considering anything about time. Right? So even though adding one particle at a time, it will take a lot of uh, one particle at a time. It will take a lot of time. But since we are not considering anything about how much time it is going to take, the duration. So we can say that there are two possible ways: pour all the sand at once and add a particle at a time. Add a particle at a time. Now let us look. Now let us look what is going to happen. Now let us look what is going to happen. As soon as I pour all the sand into it, or as soon as I Pour all the sand into it. What is going to happen here? The pressure will increase. The P external will increase. Yes or no? Tell me. It will go down. Yes or no? This piston will go down, na? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. The piston will go down. 
while pouring down so i have lifted my sand up and i am pouring it down okay i am pouring it down so as soon as i start pouring it down is there any possibility that i can reverse that change is there any possibility in between the process it is the sand is falling down and in between the process i want to reverse it i want to take a u turn is this possible sir if you are putting like a small amount of sand is possible no 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 i am pouring the whole sand back down no sir no okay but what if if i add uh, one particle at a time slowly hai na then i can take a u turn at any point of time yes or no yes yes during the process right during the process so in this case i can say that if i pour all the sand at once it is going to be it is going to be irreversible right now this irreversible please remember it is about the process it is not about the state that means while a process is happening you cannot reverse it okay because i know you will have this doubt in your mind i can take the sand from the piston and i can put it in the bag then it is reversed so i have got a, i have i have reversed this thing no 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 what you are talking about is the reversing of state what i am talking about here what we are talk, talking here is the process so once you have lifted the sand bag up and you are pouring it down like this now while the process is happening you can't reverse it all of you are clear with this reversible irreversible yes or no tell me yes sir everyone khalil masia mehreen any doubt yes no, parvati sir. razan no doubt okay fine so irreversible the process is irreversible irreversible okay so while the process is happening i cannot reverse the direction of the change i cannot reverse the direction of the change and if i add one particle at a time if i add one particle at a time then i can say that it is reversible because i am going slowly one step one step one step one step and then i thought that no i want to go back so i can go back here right i can go back but for irreversible process pouring all the sand at once it is not going to happen i cannot i cannot change it i cannot change it right now there are a few points that you can see first thing uh, all of you can see is that there will be a sudden increase in the pressure if i pour the sand at once yes or no Yes, yes, sir. Right? That means the driving force. So we have see, there will be P external, the P external that is new P external. Okay. So initially it will have P I and this P external. So the P external it will be very high than P inter P internal initially. Yes or no? If I measure the in if I measure the pressure inside the system before adding sand and after adding sand, it will be what? It will be very different right it will be very different but if i am adding so what do you think what will happen if i add one grain of sand will the pressure change no 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 so yes. next thing is that next thing is that since we are not seeing so in this case first thing is that the driving force now so this p external is the driving force for the change and the p internal they will be very different and reversible they will not be so much different and hence we can say that if we are not seeing any considerable change in the pressure of the system that means we can say that it is in equilibrium then i add one more sand one more grain of sand one more particle of sand then what happened then i also i saw that there is no considerable change in the pressure so that means the next step was also in, in equilibrium then again the equilibrium will be completely maintained till i have reached the final state till i have reached the final state so in this reversible process equilibrium is maintained in all step equilibrium is maintained in all step okay now then you can already see that irreversible process it will be fast reversible process will be is going to be slow it is going to be slow now also you can see that the external force external force that is applied the driving force which is uh, the driving force which is leading to the change in the reversible process is very 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 small it is very 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 small okay and reversible process 
it is imaginary you can't have reversible process in uh, universe so you can only think about so most all the natural processes that are there they are irreversible process okay they are irreversible processes okay so we will write you will get some points here differences of reversible and irreversible okay reversible and irreversible so this is the end of terminology this is the end of terminology now <clears throat> let us we will introduce we will introduce a word which is known as energy all of you have heard about energy yes or no tell me all of you have heard about energy yes sir uh, okay tell me a few types of energy that you have heard about heat energy hmm. yes yes ram heat energy heat energy okay what internal else? energy इंटरनल एनर्जी ये तो पढ़ के आए इक्लिब्रियम आप पहले का बताइए दसवीं क्लास का काइनेटिक एनर्जी पोटेंशियल एनर्जी हां वेरी गुड काइनेटिक एनर्जी पोटेंशियल एनर्जी ओके काइनेटिक एनर्जी पोटेंशियल है ना मैकेनिकल एनर्जी ओके फाइन सो दीस थिंग्स आर दीस एनर्जीज यू हैव लर्न दीस एनर्जीज यू हैव लर्न ओके नाउ इफ आई से दैट देयर इज अ पेन हियर दिस इज अ पेन इट इज Above the ground, h height. Then you will say that it has potential energy. Yes or no? Yes. Tell me. Okay. But what if the pen pen is in the ground? Will it have any energy? We don't know that. So let us now take up our microscopes and see. So when we look at the pen. pen is made of atoms so let us now focus on atoms so there are two atoms right there are two atoms they are bonded if that that is bonded that means it has some kind of energy right because they are bonded together so there is some forces of attraction if there is some force of attraction involved then obviously that is there is going to be energy involved okay there is going to be energy involved so that energy now that energy that we say that it is the internal energy of a system what is the internal energy and we show that in internal energy as u and u it is equal to the if it is moving then it will have some kinetic energy there will be e pot now potential energy it is not only for example if i say positive charge and negative charge whenever there is a force of attraction there will be a potential energy okay so what is the force of attraction between the ground and the pen there was gravitational force of attraction and hence there was the potential energy we said na that was the gravitational potential energy if you have learned your 11th standard physics yes or no we have revised that na gravitational potential energy yes or no guys yes sir yes sir. so that is gravitational potential energy now if you have positive and negative charges so they also have coulombic force of attraction then there is also potential energy so whenever there is a force of attraction there we have potential energy so e kinetic e potential then if you are rotating that means there will be e rotational involving rotational energy if you are moving that will be in a straight line that will be translational energy if you are vibrating there will be some energy involved in that that will be the e vibration okay so all the energy the sum of all forms of energy sum of what is u u is internal energy it is the sum of all forms of all forms of energy stored in system okay this stored in system what is u it is the sum of all forms of energy now you tell me i have a pen here okay let me say that i have a pen here now this the potential energy sorry the internal energy is u1 now you have seen here that there is a term for potential energy also in the internal energy and what happened the pen fall down and it pick in it came here it came here now we say that this is u2 this is u2 then while falling down there was a decrease in potential energy yes or no tell me guys yes from the state 1 to the state 2 now since potential energy is also included in internal energy i can say that there is a decrease in 
internal energy also yes or no yes sir hmm? right there is a decrease in internal that means it is depending on the state of the system if it is h height above the system that means there is some internal energy and if it is in some other state it has some other internal energy that means i can say that u is what is a state function u is a state function okay that means it depends on the state of the system it depends on the state of the system it does not okay fine now you tell me what will happen if the pen was here like this okay if the pen was here like this and i was holding it and i threw it down the ground like this then also the change in energy will be same only na if i drop if it drop like this or like that if i measure the change in energy when it has stopped moving then the change in energy will be same yes or no this will be u1 this will be u2 yes, and this will be also u2 it, that means it does not depend on how we are how we are carrying out a process it only depends on the state of the system it only depends on the state of the system and hence what hence the internal energy is what internal energy is the state function now as you can see that as you can see that we now even if you are a physicist physicist or if you are a chemist it doesn't matter if you are learning science you will be always interested in some positions u1 and u2 right u1 and u2 that means internal energy in this state and internal energy in this state so we are we say that we are more interested in what we are more interested in the change in internal energy change in internal energy rather than rather than the rather than what rather than the absolute value okay rather than the absolute value so we are more interested in what the change in internal energy so we will write delta u will be equal to u final minus u initial those who have studied thermodynamics in their school they must have seen this particular equation yes or no delta u is equal to u final minus u initial okay those who have not seen also but they know that whenever we put a delta sign we say final minus initial do you guys have any problem with this particular statement or with this particular uh, equation tell me guys yes no problem so we just re share this thing it is same thing okay fine now this is now this is the point in which i found thermodynamics to be absurd i mean like absolutely absurd why if i talk about u final what is this the absolute internal energy at final state yes or no yes yes what is u initial it is the absolute internal energy at initial state yes or no yes sir yes sir ye to bakwas likha hai na fir na that we are not interested in absolute we are interested in change at the end they put up a equation and it says that you have to take the difference between final and initial seems absurd all of you what did we write we are not interested in absolute we are interested in change but to but to calculate change they have written an equation in which you have u final minus u initial what is u final the absolute internal energy at final state and the absolute internal energy at initial state all of you agree with this or no you find it yes. okay no it's absurd it's absurd now please listen it may seem absurd but now you will change your perspective hai na you will change your perspective this is not formula this is not formula we are not going to use this to calculate any change okay this is definition what is this this is the definition of delta u fine what is delta u it is the definition not the form. we are not going to use this in order to calculate the internal energy okay in order to calculate the internal energy this is the definition of delta u the change in internal energy is what the internal energy at final state minus the internal energy of initial state okay 
now all of you are fine with this it is a statement it is not a equation okay okay guys yes or no tell me yes 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 sir. yes okay fine now we write what do we write we will write delta u it is equal to u product minus u reactant also because product is the final state reactant is the reactant is what the initial state now if i get the delta now how will we calculate delta u that we will know but let us see some general cases if u is positive then what we can say that the internal energy of product is greater than the internal energy of reactant if the change in internal energy it is equal to negative then we can say that the internal energy of product is less than the internal energy of reactant and if i say that the internal energy of u, internal energy the change in internal energy is zero then we can say that the internal energy of product is equal to the internal energy of reactant any doubt here please let me know any doubt here no sir. no sir no doubt okay fine now let us see how can we bring up change in internal energy how can we bring up change in internal energy so let us say we have again a piston like this okay a piston like this so what we can do uh, let us say that i want to move this piston it was first here and i want to move this to this state okay like this fine then i will have to put some force here is yes or no if i want to move it tell me i will have to put some force yes or no right so i have to put some force and i can move it the other way of moving it would be the way of moving it would be if i will heat this gas there is gas here and if i heat it then it will move yes or no tell me yes guys either i have to put some force or i have to put energy put heat is there any other way that you can see to move this piston about yes guys tell me no sir no 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 that means if i am uh, if i am putting some force if i am putting some force against uh, if i am uh, applying force against uh, something then i can say that i am doing work right and then there is heat so there are only two things by which you can change the change the internal energy either you can do work or you can heat either you can do work on the system or you can heat the system okay so the modes of transfer of energy is what there are two modes of transfer of energy that is heat and work modes of transfer of energy now please now this should be very clear to you modes of transfer of energy now please never say that heat is energy okay heat is not a form of energy heat is the mode of transfer of energy heat is how we transfer energy work is how we transfer energy from one system to other system if i am lifting up and up from ground to a height h then i am transferring energy right so this pen it did not have any energy now i am putting in the work and i am lifting it up so i am doing work on a system and hence it is transferring energy similarly heat similarly heat also is the same heat is used to transfer energy it is not used to it is not a kind of energy it is not a type of energy so the first is heat okay that is shown by q it is shown by q and if you add heat to the system then q will be positive because you have added heat to the system and if you remove heat from the system that means if you cool the system or if you uh, 
there are many things that you can say add heat to the system that can also be said as that can also be said as mm, heat is transferring from surrounding to system heat is transferred from surrounding to system and if you are removing if you are removing heat remove heat from system then u will be equal to negative so if you are removing heat then the transfer will be system to surrounding then it will be q will be negative and if heat is added to the system then the flow of heat will be surrounding to the system okay surrounding to the system next is work that is shown by w small w lower case w okay lower case w now in this case what will happen if i am work is done on the system that means what is going to happen that means you will be having w it is equal to positive because we are adding some energy by doing work on the system i am doing work on the pin i am lifting it up so i am increasing the energy if work is done by the system then it will be what w will be negative because work is done by the system it is doing the now work is done by the system on the surrounding it is transferring energy from system to surrounding okay system to surrounding okay so these things are fine yes or no first of all tell me that q and yes. w and a positive negative signs are fine all of you all of you are okay with sign yes sir hai na so always yes, sit in the container sit in the beaker and think what is happening if you if you are getting heat that means the internal energy is increasing and hence the q should be positive the q should be positive and if you are removing that it should be negative work is done on the system on the system then it will positive positive if it is if work is done by the system then it will be negative now we said now we said that the internal energy can be changed only by two the internal energy change can be done only by two methods either by heat or by work right and this is the mathematical statement for the first law of thermodynamics okay first law of thermodynamics so it essentially it deals with the conservation of this is the conservation of energy hai na because see this pen initially it had no energy but then when i lifted it up what happened it got potential energy now if the energy of pen has increased there should be some substance in the universe whose energy would have been decreased and that is my energy right if i am lifting something up that means the energy internal energy of that system is going to increase but my energy is going to decrease so it is in a way telling about the conservation of energy okay in a way it is telling about the conservation of energy you can write the statement that the, the first law of thermodynamics will state that a change in internal energy can only be caused by a change in heat or work okay only heat or work yes so you tell me any problem till here any problem no, till here guys no sir no, no? so we have learned many things today Okay, many things today. We started with thermodynamics. What is that? Now, uh, in terminology, we started with system. We started with system. System we divided into first of all hetero, homo. We have also divided system into three types. That is open, closed, and isolated. You can also divide system in one or two more types. You can say that a system is rigid, or it is flexible. Hai na? So whenever you have a piston, that means it is going to be flexible. But if you have a container which is completely blocked, then it will be rigid system. Okay, the boundary is flexible or the boundary is rigid. But these things you don't have to worry; these are not in your syllabus. Okay, you can just see this, keep this in your head. Now system is done. Then we said about surrounding. Surrounding is that part of the universe which is other than the system. And system and surrounding, they make up what? The universe. They make up the Universe. Then we also learnt about the practicality of this definition of surrounding. That it is essentially though that part of the universe which gets affected by the system. It is that part of the universe that gets affected by the system. 
then what did we learn today what did we learn today we learned about yes guys what did we learn after this reversible and irreversible and irreversible reversible to both bad matter we learned about the properties right we said that we will have we will learn about properties and in properties we divided them into two types macroscopic properties into extensive and we divided that into intensive right extensive and intensive then what did we do then we said that some properties are some properties are state function some properties are path function right some properties are path function now in those state function there will be some properties that will be using to describe a system those we called as state variables now those state function which are used to describe the state of a particular system those are known as state variables those are known as state variables now after that we talked about thermodynamic equilibrium what is equilibrium equilibrium is that state of the system where nothing happens the state in which there is no considerable change in properties right the properties they are not going to change they are not going to change the properties are not going to change then we talked about thermodynamic process in thermodynamic process we talked about many things started with isothermal the temperature is constant at the temperature is constant then adiabatic where heat there is no exchange of heat then we talked about isobaric right isobaric the pressure is constant isoporic the volume is constant in cyclic process we will have we will start with here at this point and then again go back and come back to that same point after that we look, looked about looked with reversible and irreversible reversible and irreversible and after that we studied just now internal energy internal energy that is shown by u and it can be only changed with two times with two things either heat or by work and this makes the first law of thermodynamics this makes the first law of thermodynamics in the next class i'm giving you some uh, i'm giving you some notes here in the next class we will do some